Today, we're gonna fix the worst mistake freelance artists make. And how do we know it's the worst? Well, there's so many reasons, but the main one is, I made this mistake. I'd slave away at massive projects, agree to impossible deadlines, and this almost killed the spark I had to continue freelancing. But once I fixed this mistake, I was able to get better clients, charge way more, and build an amazing portfolio. So what is it and how can we avoid this? Delicious looking dick from... Uh, <laughs> how much would you charge for this as a freelancer? $50, maybe a thousand. It's kind of difficult to gauge the answer, right? And that's kind of the point. There's no indication as to what the project's scope is, the client's needs or wants, and most importantly, there's no project brief. These are all factors when it comes to making these kind of decisions. But Let's come back to this question in a sec, because what if I told you it's actually super simple to answer once you understand this very simple secret. And how do I know this? Because using this secret, I was able to charge 10 times the amount for essentially the same level of work. The secret is actually language. How we speak to our clients determines how they interpret what we have to offer and ultimately how much we get paid. If you were to approach a client, would you say, hey, my cost for this service is $1,000. Maybe you might say the price of my service is $1,000. Or maybe even the value of this service is $1,000. Feed him to the lions, don't you think? Are you still with me? No. All right, cost, price, and value. These are all words that are kind of interchangeable, but they mean vastly different things. And the moment we understand these, we can begin talking to our clients more directly and increase the money on any given project. So let's break down these concepts quickly for a better understanding. And the easiest way for me to demonstrate this will be to tell you about my biggest failure. I'm free. Liquicol, a Hungarian beverage company, reached out to me after seeing some of my work online and asked if I could create something for their brand. Without hesitation, I immediately responded with this. This would be my largest mistake, probably the biggest L I've made so far. And again, it's because I didn't know what I was saying. So let's break this down real quick. You might have heard the phrase, cost of doing business. And that's literally what it sounds like. It's the exact amount of money needed to cover labor, equipment, and overhead costs. Anything that seemed to be paid in order for you to complete the job at hand, that is the cost. Now this is probably my least favorite word in the freelance diction because it doesn't take into account profit. Profit being the portion of money that you get to take home once the project is complete. The word Smeeve should have used was price. And this unfortunately cost him thousands. The reason why price is such a beautiful word is because it's the combination of cost and profit. No matter who you're talking to or what terminology they use, profit is always implied. And the amazing thing about profit is that you get to determine exactly how much it is. But profit is kind of random. There's no right or wrong amount that it should be. So how do we calculate this? Well, probably the easiest way is to factor in risk. 99% of the time, you as the freelancer will be taking on all of the risk when accepting a client's proposal. Simply because you don't know all the ways a job could go wrong. What if your equipment breaks halfway through production? Or what if the client changes their mind on something? There's so many different aspects that come into play with risk. So in the case of Smith, what he should have done was ask questions. What's the project scope? How many revisions will you need? What's the timeline? With all of these answers, I could have quickly determined the cost to complete the project, the risk involved, and the profit margin that I feel comfortable charging. And if you are wondering, the price I should have charged was $10,000. You might be thinking, Smeeve, that's crazy. But let me run you through the thought process. At the time, I was earning $5,000 a month for my full-time job. The Liverpool project was a month long, had countless revisions and some unforeseen setbacks that I didn't account for. So in hindsight, the cost should have been at minimal 5K to match what I was earning at my actual job. And for the profit, remember, we 
the freelancer get to determine this. So for me now, I'm comfortable setting this at 50% for a total of 10K. Now that we know the difference between cost and price, let's tie this all together and tackle this last term. Pero lo hidratamos con agua y jabón especial. Le hacemos... Value is the final boss of these three terms, and it's probably the most important one to understand. As the freelancer, we get to set the price for our service, but the buyer or the client gets to determine the value. So for example, a golden apple. Me as the buyer, I see no value in this. It's a food item that's going to rot, has paper thin gold around it, and it's probably kind of disgusting to eat. But a zombie villager, he'll give his life for that apple. Okay, weird analogy, I know. But if you take anything away from this video, I want you to remember this. When value exceeds price, buyers give you money. You might be saying, Smeef, this is great, but how do I personally get more money? At the end of the day, it's something that you gradually work towards and increase over time. And this brings me back to the original question. How much would you charge for this as a freelancer? Well, I actually asked you guys directly and as expected, the answers were wildly different. Some of you said 50 bucks, some 5,000. But the truth is, this was actually a trick question. There is no correct answer, and you can only truly answer this once you understand cost, price, and value. Now, all of this is fantastic knowledge to have, but the truth is, landing a client is extremely hard if you don't have a body of work behind you or a fantastic portfolio. So that's why as of right now, I'm super excited to tell you that I've just launched Level Up Academy. For all you lovely people in the premiere, you should see a link and a very special discount code. The two classes available are both of my product animation masterclasses. I've taught this class to literally thousands of students and the reviews are just amazing. In both classes, I walk you through step-by-step, step, start to finish, on how to create a beautiful product animation for your portfolio. Now, this isn't the extent of Level Up Academy. In fact, it's actually a soft launch to gauge the interest and get some real feedback from you guys. The core content and structure of the full Level Up Academy course is deep in production right now, and it's planned for a release in 2023. If you haven't joined the waitlist, now is probably a great time as you get 50% off when the course launches. So now we know how to price our work, but there's still the massive problem of even beginning to make money with Blender. And to fix that, you'll want to watch this video right here.